good morning to everyone uh, i thank uh, our department uh, our hod madam and uh, ruby madam and arun sir for giving me this opportunity uh, to take part in this alumni series program uh, uh, ruby madam was my project guide uh, in my final year uh, madam has been guiding to after my passing out also uh yeah, i thank uh, once again i thank madam for uh, selecting me to uh, uh, present uh, this uh, program in this alumni series uh, i am very happy to talk among the students and uh, my friends uh, because this is the first alumni program i am attending uh, and this is the, i think this is the first uh, webinar program uh, alumni webinar program for, for sbc civil department um, Uh, okay. Now going to my content uh, today, uh, which uh, topic I am going to present is eco-friendly construction and uh, the career opportunities in civil engineering. I hope the career opportunities part will be helpful for will be helpful for all the students. Uh, and uh, the eco-friendly construction part, uh, eco-friendly construction part is very important nowadays because. Uh, the construction field is shifting towards uh, uh, construction field is shifting towards the eco friendly construction and because of uh, the, this global warming effect uh, the mean sea level is uh, keeping on rising and uh, we have been facing many uh, natural calamities through this uh, uh, global warming effect so the, the need for the hour is uh, eco friendly construction only And the entire world is nowadays shifting towards this eco-friendly construction. This eco-friendly part uh, not only takes part in uh, takes part in civil engineering, but it also plays a role in other fields like uh, uh, autom uh, automation and uh, in the industry and electronics. In all other parts uh, of the uh, engineering field, uh, eco-friendliness is only nowadays followed. Uh, so we must also shift our eye towards the eco-friendly construction. So only uh, I, I have chosen this topic. These topics are the need for the hour. Okay, eco-friendly construction and the career benefits and what are all the career opportunities you have? Uh, if you know now, then only you can shape your uh, uh, academics along that. We have uh, many uh, many parts in civil engineering like uh, valuation. You have management part. you have arbitration and you have design part and you have government service and you have research part you have many fields so once uh, you once you came to know about uh, all these parts then only you can uh, shape your academics uh, uh, along that uh, along your interest okay. uh, now moving to eco friendly construction eco friendly construction uh, means uh, the main reason for, for introducing eco friendly construction is global warming okay uh, global warming uh, this has been the uh, fear for all the countries in the world so what they have done uh, in the 2015 they arranged a conference in paris uh, that is called as paris climate change conference in that they have signed uh, one agreement uh, what that agreement says is that the global temperature increase should be well within 1.5 degrees celsius uh after the industrial revolution uh, the temperature increase has been in uh, the industrial revolution took place in 1970 uh, sorry the industrial revolution started uh, uh, in uh, uh, 1880 it is uh, uh, from 200 years before industrial revolution took place uh, before that uh, the global temperature increase was very much low like 0.2 degrees celsius uh, for 100 or 200 years like that only the uh, temperature increase was but after the uh, introduction of this uh, industrial revolution the temperature of the earth started to increase very rapidly after the global revolution uh, that is from 1800 ad the temperature has increased from two, uh, some 3 degrees celsius uh, sorry some 2.5 degree celsius about uh, above its uh, normal average level so that what all countries have decided is to keep the temperature increase well within 1.5 degree celsius 
that is what they decided in the paris climate change conference uh, after that conference uh, and after the publishing of this agreement many countries uh, many countries have signed that agreement and india has also signed that uh, agreement uh, you all have no if you, you have if you have followed the news you might have come across uh, that the united states alone uh, uh, did not uh, does not want to follow this agreement they have said that they will follow it uh, up to this 2020 and after that we won't follow because it will uh, okay uh, after that uh, 2020 it will develop uh, it will uh, it will uh, start to decrease our country's development so united states has said uh, that they won't follow it after 2020 but uh, other countries have supported this uh, agreement uh, uh, because of the benefit of the entire globe Uh, that is the main reason uh, for the eco-friendly construction. In civil engineering, we can follow only eco-friendly construction in order to reduce this global warming. A global warming means uh, to reduce the temperature uh, increase of the air. Uh, our civil, our construction field uh, accounts for 36% of the global final uh, energy use. and 39% of energy related carbon dioxide emission carbon dioxide is one of the green important greenhouse gases okay so if you reduce the greenhouse gas uh, we will automatically reduce the effect of global warming okay now uh, what is the current scenario is okay, to improve the to contribute to the building sector towards global uh, so towards the reduction of the greenhouse gas effect we must uh, red, uh, we must uh, need to improve on average of 30% uh, to be on track to meet the global uh, global climate ambitions okay this can be done by reduction of greenhouse gases greenhouse gases means you all will know the carbon dioxide carbon monoxide methane and uh, chlorofluorocarbon these are called as the greenhouse gases okay if you reduce this amount of greenhouse gases we can uh, or, uh, or if we maintain the greenhouse gases in its proper uh, uh, ratio uh, you can maintain the global warming uh, in a correct way okay so we must uh, handle these uh, uh, greenhouse gases in proper in proper way that is why uh, the government is uh, taking initiatives like electric cars electric bikes uh, that is the reason So, uh, why they have chosen because those type of places will emit, uh, will emit, or it won't emit any carbon uh, related oxides, uh, so that we can maintain the greenhouse gases in proper ratio. In civil engineering field or in construction field, what we can do is uh, we can manufacture materials that are eco friendly, and uh, we can have proper demolition and construction methods. Demolition plays a very important role in the emission of uh, dust and uh, particulate matter, suspended, uh, suspended particulate matter, into the atmosphere. So proper control should be followed during demolition also, and those demolished waste must also be properly used uh, so that it won't affect the atmosphere uh, in the way of emission of any dust particles. And uh, energy efficient construction should be followed. uh these three things we can follow in civil engineering so that we can reduce the greenhouse gases emission the first is first one is manufacturing proper building materials next is proper demolition and construction and the final one is the energy efficient construction okay. next what is mean by greenhouse gas what are the greenhouse gases and what are what is mean by greenhouse gas effect if we know what is mean by greenhouse gas effect then only we can reduce the global warming effect uh, first of all greenhouse gas greenhouse uh, the name greenhouse came to it because it is a type of agricultural practice which is followed in uh, foreign countries they will have uh, a gas like uh, room uh, so that it will allow the sunlight and after the sunlight gets uh, after the sunlight uh, is absorbed in the plants on the floors that the remaining sunlight will be re-radiated okay re-radiated sunlight will be reflected by the other side of the glass uh, 
uh, again into the into the field uh, or again into the room and some part of the heat will be emitted outside of the glass okay so that room will be maintained in proper temperature which will be which will be helpful uh, for the crop cultivation uh, that type of room or house is called as greenhouse this is the type of agricultural practice that is followed in uh, foreign countries like london netherlands like that so that one the same effect uh, is all uh, sorry the same effect takes place in the earth also uh, in the earth uh, yeah, outside of the earth atmosphere is fully filled uh, filled with greenhouse gases greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide cfcs nitrous oxide and methane carbon dioxide has 55 percent uh, sorry the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide content is 55 percent cfcs is 24 percent nitrous oxide 6 percent and methane 15 percent this uh, ratio is from uh, some uh, eight years back so, uh, what proportion they have calculated is carbon dioxide has 55 percent Chlorofluorocarbon has 24 percent, nitrous oxide has 6 percent, and methane 15 percent. Okay, uh, you remember this greenhouse uh, uh, greenhouse type of cultivation in uh, uh, foreign country? A similar effect will be uh, will be uh, replicated in the uh, yet also. That is called as greenhouse gas effect. Uh, how will take place in earth is the uh, radiation from the sun comes to the earth after the uh, it comes into the earth as uh, ultraviolet radiations radiations coming from the sun will be in the form of ultraviolet radiations after that the surface of the earth absorbs uh, surface of the earth absorbs the heat and it stores some uh, some part of the heat okay after that the uh, wavelength of the rays will be changed so that ultraviolet rays will be transformed to infrared rays or infrared radiations as the earth gets heated the ultrared ultraviolet rays will be transformed to infrared rays and uh, some part of the some uh, some part of the rays will be emitted back from the part of the earth it will be uh, emitted back from the part of the earth and the greenhouse gases which are which are on the top part of the atmosphere will some uh, will absorb some part of this infrared radiation it will, uh, and it will reflect back to the air and it will allow some part of the infrared radiation to be escape from the to be escape into the upper atmosphere so the infra so the greenhouse gases will form a blanket around the surface of the air or it will form a blanket on the upper atmosphere the greenhouse gases will always be there in the top part of the atmosphere it is uh, not only that uh, we we have alone created the greenhouse gases that, uh, that is not correct the greenhouse gases will always be present above the surface of the earth if there is no greenhouse gas uh, researchers suggest if there is no greenhouse gases the temperature the temperature of the earth will be now in the range of minus uh, uh, minus 18 degrees celsius because there will be no heat retained in the uh, earth so that everything will be in a very low temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius. The greenhouse gases are always present along, around the surface of the earth. But what we have done is uh, we have increased the amount of the greenhouse gases so that the amount of radiation re-radiated to the earth is increased. That is what we have done. We have re-radiated, we have increased the greenhouse gases and we have to make it re-radiate into the surface of the earth uh, in a large amount. This has made the temperature of the earth to increase in a very large content. That is what we have done. Greenhouse gases will always be there in the upper atmosphere. But what we have done is due to our improper practices, we have increased the proportion of the greenhouse gases in the top part of the atmosphere. After the re-radiation, what this uh, rays are doing is see some uh, some part is re-radiating back into the atmosphere and some part of the rays have been escaped out of the surface this is what uh, happening uh, among the greenhouse gases uh, this makes the temperature of the earth increase in a large amount this is called as global warming 
the entire temperature of the earth is made to decrease due to this temperature increase the uh, ice cubes uh, the, the I, uh, ice regions that are in the north pole and the south pole are made to melt one piece uh, ice blocks melt that will increase the, uh, the water will automatically flow, flow to the lowest part of the earth the lowest part of the earth is called as seas seas are the lowest part of the earth this water will automatically flow towards the lowest part and due to that the mean sea level will increase the level of the sea uh, sea level will automatically increase and uh, due to that the um, uh, evaporation condensation process we will have more amount of rain we will have more amount of cyclone and uh, we will have uh, uh, climate change thing of the climate period that is summer periods will shift from uh, march to june from, from april to july and up to august and the monsoon periods will also change and the intensity of the monsoon will also change these are all the, the effects that will uh, happen due to this global warming so we must have proper understanding about this global warming once we understand properly about this global warming then we can uh, follow the remedies uh, what uh, we have seen the greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide uh, cfcs methane nitrogen like that the cfcs is uh, nowadays increasing in a large amount because of the use of refrigerators and uh, air conditioners uh, the, uh, the cfcs uh, has increases in a large amount uh, if we plan a building properly we can uh, reduce the usage of air conditioners so that the amount of CFCS, cfcs will be decreased and uh, we can reduce the carbon dioxide emission and carbon monoxide emission from the cement manufacturing and brick manufacturing process which will also benefit the uh, uh, which will also benefit in the way of reducing the greenhouse gases so this is the greenhouse gas effect it is a normal agricultural process which is followed in the abroad uh, in the foreign countries that is in colder countries they won't have proper amount of heat in order to retain the heat they have followed that process that is called as greenhouse cultivation uh, once uh, the same effect is taking place with air we have uh, given the name as greenhouse gas effect uh, this is uh, this greenhouse gas effect has um, uh, has led to global warming also okay next we can see the flow chart of greenhouse gases this is the greenhouse the sunlight passes through the atmosphere and the earth first it absorbs it the land heated by the sunlight emit that the heat as infrared radiation the ultraviolet rays is now transferred to infrared radiation next, the greenhouse gases absorbs this heat the greenhouse gases some part of this absorb the heat and uh, uh, some part will be transmitted down to the earth and the some part will be uh, released to the upper atmosphere this is the whole list of the greenhouse gas effect you must know this in uh, if we have to take proper remedies this will be useful for your uh, environmental uh, engineering also uh, in fact you will be uh, studying how to reduce the air pollution and all those uh, and how those air pollutants will affect our health and all that uh, this is the main uh, main effect of uh, air pollution also now stepping to eco friendly uh, building materials uh, in the, the construction field can reduce its greenhouse gas emission in three ways the first is eco friendly building materials next one is uh, uh, proper demolition and construction practices and the third one is energy efficiency you, you all would have uh, come across many type of uh, building materials you may not know that uh, those buildings are uh, eco-friendly materials like uh, fly ash bricks and uh, bricks from uh, uh, concrete waste and demolition waste plastic bricks and uh, 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 plywood blocks from uh, sugar cane waste and uh, uh, poly tiles all those you would have come across but you won't know that these materials are uh, uh, eco-friendly materials or eco-friendly building materials. Uh, this is the uh, top. Uh, this is uh, this is the top uh, research-oriented uh, 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 field in uh, civil engineering. Uh, major research are nowadays taking place in 
eco building eco friendly building materials uh, bricks from coal washery rejects that is uh, from uh, coal uh, waste uh, we, we take uh, coal from nlc uh, from that waste we can manufacture bricks and bricks uh, building blocks from pine waste bricks from demolition waste and bricks from plastic waste and uh, bricks from fly ash higher cement board uh, you would have come across this higher cement board uh, higher means uh, from the coconut fiber they will make the cement boards and uh, they will keep on the top of the roofs or they will keep on the side of the buildings uh, they will use a uh, as cable that is called as higher cement board cement board made up of uh, are made with the help of coconut fibers that is called as coir cement board and compressed earth blocks uh, you, you would have come across compressed earth that is similar type of thing and the epoxy composites and doors that is how you, you uh, we, are, we all are using for lightweight doors uh, it is also an organic material like epoxy composite it is also an eco friendly material it is not normal plastic it is a new type of allowed plastic by the government uh, you uh, uh, have known uh, the government is allowing certain type of plastic bags plastic bags which are in proper micron pattern uh, government allows plastic bags uh, proper micron pattern they have banned the uh, plastic bags which are about the micron pattern adjusted by, by the government likewise this epoxy, epoxy doors are also helpful uh, are also helpful eco friendly materials uh, next is uh, fly ash boards and uh, thick cast blocks uh, manhole covers these are uh, uh, these are uh, all are eco friendly building materials and about these many eco friendly building materials are daily being invented because uh, it is one of the top research oriented topic in india Next, first one is green concrete. We can also manufacture concrete uh, using uh, wastes from uh, mines and uh, plastics and sawdust. We can manufacture concrete uh, from, from those waste products also. If you reduce waste, then it will automatically uh, reduce the suspended particle matter, uh, particle matter in the atmosphere, which will uh, reduce air pollution in a larger way. Green concrete uses mining waste, glass waste, mud, sawdust, and burnt clay. If these, uh, uh, if we if we use uh, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, water, cement, and mixtures, plasticizers for making a concrete, we can alter the composition by introducing some part of uh, sawdust in place of fine aggregate. Likewise, you can alter it, and you can see the uh, you can alter it, and you can see the effects. Like increase in compressive strength and tensile uh, strength, and you can also check uh, in, uh, in your uh, final year project also. Next, uh, this green concrete has led to uh, reduce the CO2 emission in the atmosphere. Okay. Next one is plastic bricks. This is the new innovation: plastic bricks, manufacturing uh, the bricks using plastic waste. Uh, uh, plastic will uh, have uh, very high tensile strength compared to normal conventional brick. The normal conventional brick will have uh, some somewhat less tensile strength only. But introducing plastics and plastic composites will increase the tensile strength of the bricks. If we use plastic automatically, the waste in the atmosphere, uh, in the environment, will be decreased. Uh, we can you can see these plastic bricks in highways and the railway infrastructure they are using it now. Uh, 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 in future days, it will also be used for uh, buildings. Okay, this plastic bricks is one of the important uh, uh, innovation among the people. Next one is the protherm bricks. Uh, this is the proper thermal control bricks. It, uh, you, you you can see the, this bricks will have uh, some. Uh, gaps within it in order to decrease the heat of the room. Uh, it, uh, the heat will be get entrapped within those holes and it won't uh, let uh, and, and it won't leave it uh, to uh, enter into the room in an easy way. You can also modify the shape of this proton bricks and you can uh, see the, those results also. The, it is made up of rice, uh, rice has cash, uh, sawdust and coal ash also.
Next one is uh, Autoblade Aerated Concrete Blocks. AAC blocks, you would have come across many AAC blocks uh, uh, that, are, that are called as concrete bricks. They used to say in uh, colloquial language as concrete bricks. It will have gaps within it. It will have lightweight. Uh, it is also called as uh, like the hollow block. They would say it as hollow block. Uh, it is also made from industry waste. You can uh, uh, combine the industry waste uh, from uh, uh, steel manufacturing industries. You can uh, mix those waste along with the concrete and you can manufacture this type of bricks. This is called as autoclaved aerated concrete blocks. These are used for room partitions, roofing panels, floor panels, and normal walls. It is used. Uh, you can, this type of blocks are mainly used in floors. Uh, uh, flat construction like in metropolitan cities like uh, Chennai, Bangalore, they use only these hollow blocks and AAC. Next is rice husk ash concrete. Rice husk means it is the covering of uh, the uh, outer part of the rice. Uh, after uh, heating the rice, we can uh, separate out the rice husk. Uh, it will uh, uh, always be used as waste, but we can burn and take the ash from it and you can insert it into concrete and then you can make a new type of concrete that is called as rice husk ash concrete. In Tamil, they will say it as Udi. Okay, rice husk ash concrete, it is a new type of concrete and it will have uh, increased tensile zone because of the, uh, the introduction of the fiber. This rice husk is a type of a fiber and uh, it, it can be introduced in concrete. Uh, it will have good compressive strength, strict uh, tensile strength, and the flexural strength is also greater than ordinary concrete. Next is bagless particle wood. Uh, it is similar to plywood. Uh, plywood uh, is a invention from timber. Uh, in previous days, we used to use uh, timber, and after that timber, we, we have started using plywood. And uh, since the plywood uses major part of the sawdust and timber dust, uh, in order to introduce a new type, they have used this uh, bagis. Bagis means uh, uh, in Tamil it is called as uh, uh, Once uh, uh, bagis is obtained, we, we would crush it and we can make uh, wood with the help of uh, uh, that bagis product also. It is called as bagis particle wood. You can use it, use it for making tables, uh, chairs, and um, carts, and uh, partition walls, all that. It will be a good alternative for plywood. Okay. Next is, uh, the second uh, second is proper, uh, sorry, first one is uh, using uh, good uh, eco-friendly materials. Next is uh, energy efficient building design. Uh, by introducing proper energy efficient building design, we can increase the heat consumption and energy consumption of the building. There are many ways we can say uh, one by one. The first is landscape planning. If you, uh, if, once we start to construct a house or plan any industry buildings, uh, we must first uh, place it in a proper direction by analyzing the outside the environment or climate conditions, like placing the house in proper direction, in north-south direction. If, if we must not place the house or construct a house towards the east-west direction because it will have direct heat gain during the morning and evening times. So we must place only, mostly we will say, uh, we, we, we will have seen uh, that the buildings are placed towards the north side because it won't have any direct heat gain. Uh, that, that, that only say, they say in was uh, to place uh, the house towards the north, and north direction. If we place it in east-west direction, it will have a uh, uh, direct heat gain in morning and evening time. Next, we must have proper bo water bodies around the house so that it will absorb the amount of heat and it will, it will have a proper cooling effect uh, to the building. Next is uh, daylighting. Uh, during the morning sun, we must uh, what we must do is we must allow the sunlight to come inside the building and not the heat. Okay, if we uh, allow the heat to come inside the house, we will have more amount of the uh, energy usage in order to cool the room. So what we must do is, we must uh, place proper uh, uh, shadings so that it will allow the light inside and not the heat. If you want 
to see that you can see the Anna University structural division that the, the entire construction is an energy efficient construction. They will have proper shadings such that light only will come and not the uh, heat that won't come inside the building. And they will also have proper uh, this, uh, coniferous trees are uh, around them so that uh, it will uh, only allow the uh, uh, sorry, uh, air to come inside the building. These are all the steps such as landscape planning and water bodies and daylighting. Next one is solar panels uh, in order to observe the sunlight and uh, transform it into electrical energy and the solar architecture uh, is a minimum exposure to the sun and the material selection. Material selection is those eco-friendly materials. Next insulation in order to keep uh, this is uh, this insulation will be very helpful to our uh, yeah, tropical countries like India. Uh, insulation means uh, uh, to separate, uh, sorry, no, not to allow the heat to the remaining part of the building. Insulation means not to allow the heat to the remaining part of the building. That is called as insulation. Uh, my example is uh, like a damp proof force, what we keep on the top of the building. It won't allow the heat to heat our water to pass inside. That is called as insulation. Every part of the building should be insulated properly so that it won't allow uh, the heat to the uh, down, down part of the building. Top roof should be properly insulated and the bottom part also should be insulated. Maybe we, we will have some rubber coatings like that and uh, we will have the tile roofs, uh, roof tiles. Uh, those are also, those, are, uh, those all are also proper insulation materials. Insulation is to not to allow the heat from a hot place to a colder place that is called as insulation. Next one is cool roofs. Uh, cool roofs, uh, roof tiles are used for cool roofs. That, uh, that materials used for cool roofs should have high solar reflectance and it should have high thermal emittance. It, it must reflect the sunlight uh, instantly and it must also absorb and de emit the sunlight so that the, uh, the below parts of the building will be cool enough. That is called as cool roofs. The types of cool roofs, uh, there are two types. One is intact, that it will be, that is, it will be, uh, uh, in, in, throughout it will be a uh, uh, roof cooling material. And next one is coated roofs. Uh, in, uh, cool roofs, white vinyl roofs and asphalt roofs uh, are uh, used as uh, intact and cool roofs. And coated roofs are hyperglass rubber roof coating and hyperglass uh, rubber roof and finishing top coat. This is called as uh, 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 coated roofs. This can be mixed with the paints and it can be coated on the top part of the building, or like uh, what we have uh, emulsion. Next is green roofs. This is the uh, new type of, uh, which has been followed from. Uh, uh, from 10 years, uh, we have been using these green roof. Uh, we will have cultivation or uh, plant growing on the top of the building so that it will uh, absorb the heat and it won't allow the heat in, uh, to come into the bottom part of the building. That is called as green roofs. And these green roofs can be grown on all uh, on all empty places of the building. It will keep the room uh, in a cool manner, reducing the usage of fans and uh, air conditioners. Uh, we must uh, have a growing medium like soil we must have a proper amount and uh, we, the drainage uh, of that uh, plant should not come inside and should not seep into, into the building we must have proper uh, uh, drainage bath uh, for uh, the water coming from the uh, crop uh, and it must have proper insulation and membrane coating like that that is the water should not seep into the building uh, and that uh, place should be maintained in a school so that we use green roofs. This is a green roof example. Uh, you can see in Chennai, you can see in many places uh, like these green roofs. And next one is thermal insulation. Uh, thermal insulation means that the insulation part should be given on the top part of the building uh, in order to uh, prevent the uh, incoming of the heat. Uh, uh, bad insulation or uh, glass and mineral wool. Uh, we can also make bricks using wool, that is called as uh, woolen bricks. Uh, we can use the uh, waste from the cotton and like that 
and you can make uh, make it to use uh, manufacture plates and next one is uh, port insulations uh, polyurethane and uh, polystyrene cellulose all the, those can be made into boards and they can be used as insulations next one is blown in insulations cellulose fiber glass and these uh, perlite vermiculite these are all used as uh, insulation boards uh, in order not to allow the heat into the building this is the heat comparison that the uh, yellow part is uh, how the room has been heated without any proper uh, energy efficient construction and this blue part says uh, that uh, with proper energy uh, efficient construction uh, you can see the temperature change this uh, blue part is in the range of 3 to 4 degrees celsius whereas the yellow part is in the range of 6 to 7 degrees celsius the temperature of the entire wall has been increased without any cooling techniques this drawing is called as a thermogram next one is shading the shadings will allow light to pass into the building but it won't allow uh, heat to pass it, uh, it is also called as louvers louvers will be placed in a form of inclined way uh, along the uh, direction of the sunlight uh, so that uh, we can allow only light and not any heat to pass inside the building you can see what are we can also place solar panels along the uh, shadings so that it will absorb the heat uh, and it will absorb the heat from the sun and it will transform it into electrical energy and those electrical energy will, can be saved in, uh, in solar panels on the top of the building next we, we, we can see the importance of uh, shading system uh, we have seen it, it will allow solar energy to pass through, absorb solar energy, reflect solar energy back through the glacier. That is what the shading system will do. HCA shading prevents a large part of the sun's energy from reaching the glacier and entering the building. Uh, it will, uh, if the solar energy does not get into the building, it does not have to be deal with. Now, what are all the uh, benefits of the exterior shading system? Uh, reduction in the HPAC. HPAC is uh, heat in ventil ventilation and air conditioning. Uh, if proper shading system is uh, provided in a building, we can uh, reduce the amount of heat and uh, we can have good ventilation effect and we can have uh, proper uh, air control within the building. While placing the windows, we must uh, place the windows in, in uh, exactly opposite sides so that it will have proper cross ventilation effect. Windows has to be placed in opposite sides so that air coming into the building will have a way to exit out from the building on the other side. It will only make the building to be cool or will, uh, or will make the building to have proper air control. Next one is natural daylight. If you have proper shading system, you will have proper daylight and uh, the lighting can be uh, classified into two, two types one is uh, day lighting and the other one is task lighting task lighting means the light that is required to do our uh, uh, yeah, works if we have a uh, uh, glare uh, to the entering of the sunlight we can't do any work so we must reduce that heat, uh, light glare also so that we can do the work uh, with uh, without any difficulty that is called as task lighting Natural daylighting and task lighting. Uh, comfortable working conditions which can lead to increased productivity. That is called as task lighting. Uh, a good shading system manages both heat and glare. Glare should also be managed and heat effect should also be managed. Uh, while uh, if you construct a house, you must place also the windows or the sunsets in a proper way such that it will allow only the light and not the heat and the light entry should also not have any glare effect. Using uh, exterior shading system can uh, significantly contribute to building's appearance. Yes, uh, you, uh, in an uh, IT building, you can you would have seen the entire uh, uh, front part will be made up of uh, glassing facades. Uh, it will have a different type of appearance. Next, uh, this LEED certification is uh, formed by the US Council for Green Buildings. They are rating the building. Uh, based on this LEED certification, 
uh, if you building has any lead certification uh, in the future it may come as a uh, property tax reduction for the building like that also the uh, lead means leadership in energy and environmental issues uh, this is called as shading louvers you can see those louvers in an inclined form so that it will allow only the light to come inside and not the amount of heat uh, louvers can be in different uh, can be made up of different materials it can be made up of cement concrete also it can be made up of uh, glass it can be made up of steel or it can be made up of plastic uh, and it can be made up of cardboard like that or like that materials also next is the types of uh, there are different type of shading louvers uh, shadow glass glass with various colors uh, normal shade or shadow glass means normal uh, shading louvers and next is shadow voltaic glass with photovoltaic cells this photovoltaic cells will uh, uh, absorb the heat and transform it into the electrical energy that is called as shadow voltaic glass next is uh, textile fabrics you are making the louvers with textile fabric uh, using these uh, fabrics will uh, uh will make it as a eco friendly material that is not using any glass part or a plastic part if you use glass or plastic it will be it will automatically pollute the environment so you must use uh, if we use natural material it will automatically reduce pollution next is shadow prism uh prism means it will properly manage the light prism so if we use uh, light uh, the shadow prism type of uh, louvers you can uh, reduce the you can manage Manage the task lighting without any lab. If you use prism, you can manage it with uh, uh, without any light lab. Uh, while uh, while placing louvers or windows, you must see those two effects. One is heating, and the other one is the lab, light lab. Next one is uh, uh, shadow timber. Louvers made up of timber. These are all the different types of uh, shading louvers. This is the shadow world like lowers. It will absorb the heat gain, heat gain and it will transform it into electric uh, uh, electric energy. Photovoltaic cells will, will be placed. The photovoltaic cells means uh, it will uh, produce voltage with the help of light. So it is called as photovoltaic cells. And, placed, and uh, the light from the sun will be automatically transformed. Uh, light or heat from the sun will automatically be transformed into electrical energy. This is a this shadow voltaic louvers uh, will have dual benefit. Next is how the heat uh, will flow within a building. Okay. Uh, heat flow. This is a, we, we, we will say it as a convective loop, thermal convective loop. That is one part of the brick will uh, one part of the wall will absorb the heat and it will store. And uh, during the night time, it will release the heat uh, during the upper part. So that uh, the heat will flow throughout the building, and uh, uh, during the morning time, the entire heat will be flown throughout the building, and it will it would have radiated all the heat from the uh, from the uh, wall, so that the wall will again uh, return to its original cooler position, and uh, it will keep uh, uh, cool during the daytime and warm during the night time. Okay, this is called as the convective loop uh, flow. Uh, this is a new this type of uh, uh, wall construction is normally practiced in uh, foreign countries in india now only we are uh, starting to use this type of technology uh, this is this will be very helpful in colder places like uti and uh, 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 like uti and kodaikanal uh, like that then this type of uh, flow of heat is called as convective loop the first part will have uh, a large uh, a thick, thick, thick wall, like a one one and a half feet wall, uh, uh, 1.75 feet wall. They will place so that it will have large amount of heat, and uh, it will have two vents at the top and the bottom. The cold air will flow through the bottom part, as the cold air will be very dense, and the hot air will be uh, will have low density. So the hot air hot air will try to escape through the top part. And the cold air will come to the bottom part. And uh, oh, one, uh, after the completion of this uh, uh, air circulation, the heat stored in the wall will all be exhausted out, and it will return to its original position in the morning. Time. 
solar system also use uh, so uh, storage one on the top of the roofs also so that it can uh, it can also store some of the heat and for that we use two type of walls one is rambe wall and the other one is the water wall <coughs> Trombe wall. Uh, this is a tra tra proper trombe wall. The trombe wall uh, will have uh, shading, glass uh, shading on the outer face. It will have some uh, gap, and after that gap, it will have a thick, uh, thick, thick wall. It will have a thick, uh, thick wall. The gap will be used as uh, used to insulate uh, or heat the air within that uh, within that uh, small passage. Uh, that is called as trombe wall. Uh, once trombe wall gets heated, it will get uh, heat during the night time, and it will allow the warm air uh, to escape during the night time, and uh, the cold air will be released during the day time. The trombe wall uh, is a wall that uh, traps, uh, that warms the trapped air, and it circulates uh, through the building. Uh, water walls are also perform the same role, but they will have different type of arrangement. Water walls means they will have uh, uh, the pipelines, uh, major pipelines that are passed through the wall. It will have a dual benefit, like water conduction and also keeping the wall to be cool. Uh, water is going to have a large amount of latent heat. It will absorb more heat and it will uh, store it and it can liberate in a later time. It is called as latent heat. Water has the capacity. So that only it is used uh, used in water walls. This is these are all the new type of inventions which uh, uh, you can practice in your uh, final year project. Ma'am, how is it audible, ma'am? Uh, yeah, carry on. Okay. Uh, you can see many type of uh, green buildings in Chennai. Uh, Anna Center Library Building is a green building. And uh, that uh, new government hospital, Oman Hospital, is also a green building. Uh, and uh, uh, Rain Tree, uh, you, uh, you all know the Rain Tree Portal, that is a green building. And that uh, uh, PCS building in Sirisari, that is also a green building. Uh, once you visit the Anna Centenary Library, you can feel that uh, green building effect. You won't have any air conditioners or uh, anything before the entrance, but you will have a cool air. Uh, it is because they will have a fountain before that uh, uh, library and the building orientation is also placed in such a way it allows cool air to enter inside. Uh, Anna Centenary Library is a best example for the uh, green building which you can see. Uh, every green building will have a LEED certification. Next is moving to career opportunities in uh, civil engineering. Uh, to, to know your career opportunity, first you must know we, we must know 
about uh, the role of construction sector in india construction sector is one of the uh, major important uh, sector after agricultural sector agricultural sector uh, uh, employs more than uh, uh, some 25 to 30 percent of people and next uh, highest employable sector is construction sector uh, we uh, uh, construction sector is the second largest sector in terms of uh, foreign direct investment foreign direct in investment means uh, those foreign countries will invest within india because they won't have any manpower and uh, uh, working places they won't have proper uh, landscape to construct a building or they won't have any proper environmental condition so what they do is they will come to uh, this uh, uh, business favoring countries uh, they will uh, construct uh, uh, companies in India and they will use our manpower and they will find a profit. That is called as foreign direct investment. Uh, it, it is a dual benefit. There is a dual uh, benefit for the for our India and the dual benefit for the country which is coming and doing the business here. Uh, likewise, construction industry is uh, uh, is the second which has which. Uh, uh, which makes the uh, high, highest amount of foreign direct investment. Uh, number of people involved in construction is 3.5 crore people in India. Uh, next, our construction sector contributes about 8% of the Indian uh, of the total uh, gross domestic product, that is the total uh, uh, profit made by manufacturing in India is 8%. Construction industry contributes 8%. So there is no doubt that, that our construction industry is uh, major uh, dominating industry in, uh, in our country is yes, uh, you, you have seen that 3.5 crore people are involved in construction so there is no doubt that we can find pro many ways uh, for developing our career next career opportunities in civil engineering uh, we can uh, class uh, divide into two parts one is job opportunity and the other one is career studies you can find the job opportunities in private sector entrepreneurship uh, government sectors. Next, various domains in which we can work is uh, site execution and uh, building quantity surveyor. Uh, quantity surveyor means uh, they will take the measurement and they will find the property of that uh, uh, building that they are uh, uh, submitting uh, for loan. All those the quantity surveys will only be used and uh, uh, sorry, quantity surveys will be used to find the amount of. Uh, uh, materials that are stored and they can also find the property of the building also. Next is contract preparation, uh, planning and CAD designer. So for, for, for normal uh, planning approval, uh, one uh, engineer will get some uh, uh, 20,000 to 30,000 for giving just signing one plan. Next is quality assurance and quality control and audits. And next uh, our uh, IBBA, Indian Bank Preparancy and Board of India, conducts a uh, mandatory course for three hours uh, so through registered valuation organization followed by an exam for selecting panel values. Panel valuers will be used in uh, banks to find the um, uh, uh, value of a property or uh, to, to provide any loans for that they will have panel valuers. After completing your BE, before and all, they, we must uh, go and work in a valuation company for some 10 years with proper experience or uh, we must work under a panel valuer for some, uh, uh, work under a good panel valuer, approved panel valuer for five years, uh, more than five years. And after that, uh, we must apply for interview with our uh, experiences. Uh, and after that uh, experience only, they will uh, uh, allow us as a registered panel valuer. But what the Indian Bankruptcy Board of India has come now is it has come now with the exam. After uh, qualifying your BE, you can uh, clear this exam and you can uh, uh, join as a panel valuer in any bank. If you are an uh, authorized panel valuer, you can apply to a number of banks and work uh, along with those banks. You, you, you will have many opportunities uh, is the, uh, the panel valuers. For that, you must clear this Bankruptcy Board of India exam. Uh, RVO means a registered valuation organizations. There are a number of valuation organizations in India, like the Institution of Valuers, Indian Institute of Valuers, Council of Engineers and Valuers in Jalandhar. These are also are all the registered valuation organizations by the government of India. 
have three type of value in organization uh, and once we clear this exam we can uh, automatically come out as a panel value these are the leading private construction firms yeah, once uh, you come to know about uh, these uh, uh, top construction firms you can apply to this construction firm once you get uh, a, a experience from two to three years uh, experience from uh, uh, normal cities you can apply to this uh, uh, leading uh, construction firm and you can uh, find your career track. Uh, uh, LNT, Chapurji Palanji, Afcons. Afcons is a subsidiary of uh, the Chapurji Palanji uh, and Hindustan Construction, NCC, Kutilayod, uh, Sadbo Engineering, Sipiath Infrastructure. These are, they do all type of construction like uh, railway construction, uh, airport construction, bridge construction, in the borders and the uh, dams, they do all type of construction. So finding a job in this part, uh, private uh, sector, uh, this will be, will be very useful for your career. They, they use modern technologies, new type of modern technologies, uh, all that. Next one is uh, real estate, normal builders. In uh, Chennai, you, you would have come across uh, many type of building builders. And in many cities like Coimbatore, Tunnel Valley, Tiruchi, you will have uh, many type of uh, builders. TLF, um, TLF is a top construction company, and the prestige group, Sriram Properties, Soba Developers, Soba you can see in uh, Bangalore and Chennai also. Tata Value Homes, Blue Value Homes, Akshaya Homes, Sonexelo, uh, both red properties, VGK Group and Unit Tech Group. These are all called as builders. They won't do any uh, infrastructure project. They will do only real estate construction. They will construct the flats and they will sell. Uh, if, uh, you can find uh, many engineering posts there also. They also give uh, good pay. Next is uh, government sector jobs. Uh, many of us will be trying for uh, government sector jobs. You can classify the government sector jobs one is the central government and the other one is state government. Central government exams would be quite uh, uh, tough compared to the state, state government exam. Uh, UPSC, uh, engineering services exam. Engineering services exam will be in uh, two stages. If you clear the first stage, you can apply for the next stage. And after you play, clear the descriptive exam, the second stage will be in descriptive format. And after you clear the descriptive form, descriptive exam, you can uh, 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 appear for the interview and after that you will be selected as uh, assistant executive engineer post. Uh, next is you can apply for a civil services exam also uh, for IAS, IPS. In fact, also you will have our engineering stream as one of the paper. Next is uh, uh, staff selection commission exam. You will be selected as junior engineer. In, in the, this exam is a non-interview uh, exam. You won't have any interview. Whereas in engineering services exam, UPA, engineering services exam conducted by UPSC, you will have interview after your two stages. Uh, in the uh, staff selection function, you won't have any interview. You will first have one uh, objective type exam. And after you clear that objective type exam, you will appear for the descriptive type of, uh, type of exam, uh, which you must answer uh, uh, descriptive answers. After that, uh, combining the first stage and second stage mark, you will be given the post in various uh, departments of central government. Yeah. This uh, uh, staff selection commission exam will be quite easy compared to the UPSC exam. UPSC exam will be uh, in top level because uh, they are selecting assistant executive. Next is RRB, Railway Recruitment Board of India. They, they will have senior section engineer and junior engineer also. Uh, senior section engineer will be uh, similar to the assistant engineer in Tamil Nadu. Uh, next is uh, public sector jobs. Uh, uh, this public sector jobs will also face uh, in a similar way of the central government job. Uh, there are many uh, public sector firms that are uh, uh, giving jobs for the civil engineering graduates as graduate training. First one is ONGC, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, Indian Oil Corporation, uh, NTPC, uh, Coal India Limited, Power Group. Uh, BPCL, SAIL, HPCL, Bill, NLC, BART, RIDES, EAL, SCRC, Airport Authority of India, 
everything will come under public sector units. Uh, the, uh, the public sector units they will also uh, uh, they will mainly recruit you to your gate score and uh, to your gate exam conducted by the IITs. Uh, once you clear uh, the gate exam with the top 500 rank, surely you can get to any one of these companies. Uh, they will uh, yearly they are selecting uh, some uh, each of these uh, public sectors will uh, select uh, at least uh, some hundred. Uh, selecting some hundred people uh, through the course. Uh, once if you have a good gate score, you can uh, get selected uh, uh, in any one of these companies. They will also give you a, give you a salary package, uh, which is equal to the UPSC engineering services exam salary package. They will give. Uh, so you can, once you are strong with your basic, you can apply for the gate exam and uh, you can apply for any one of these uh, uh, public sector units. Uh, sometimes they will also come uh, conduct a separate entrance exam for selecting. Uh, those in the entrance exams will also be in the same standard of uh, uh, the gate exam. Uh, the similar type of exam will be conducted. And uh, clearly, ISRO, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, will also conduct an exam for uh, selecting uh, uh, graduate trainees. But they won't uh, select with gate score. They will conduct a, a, a special entrance exam. Indian Space Research Organization alone will conduct a special entrance exam. But uh, these organizations may conduct special exam or they may recruit you to your gate score also. So, a gate score is very much important to get into this public sector. Next, uh, is our state government. Uh, our Tamil Nadu Public Service Commission uh, will have uh, uh, different uh, uh, exams for, uh, for selecting assistant engineers. They will be selected as assistant engineers once you pass through this exam. Uh, first is uh, TNPC Combined Engineering Services exam, uh, Tamil Nadu PWD Highway and uh, 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 Tamil Nadu PWD and Highway will come, uh, will, they won't conduct exam separately. But their exams will be conducted by TNPSC as combined engineering services exam. Uh, you, you will find uh, your job in uh, PWD, highway, uh, rural board, and uh, uh, rural development board like that. You can find. Next is uh, Tamil Nadu TNHP, Tamil Nadu Housing Board JE exam. They will conduct a separate type of exam. Uh, this uh, combined uh, TNPSC combined engineering services exam will be of two parts. Morning, you will have a, a civil engineering part, that is a, a technical part for 300 marks, and afternoon, you will have an aptitude, uh, aptitude exam combined with the general studies for 200 marks. Uh, that is the exam pattern, pattern for uh, combined engineering services exam. And next is uh, Tamil Nadu Housing Board AE. Uh, uh, AE that will be in only one stage, only one exam. They will conduct it for two hours. It will be similar to that answer exam. Next is Tamil Nadu slum play and board. They will also that exam will also be in the same of Tamil Nadu housing board. Next is uh, TNEB exam. Uh, TNEB is uh, all these housing board, slum play and board, uh, electricity board, PCB pollution control board, fad board will conduct the same exams in a similar way of two hours only. But the combined engineering services exam will be will alone be conducted in two ways: morning one exam, afternoon. Exam. Next is a teacher's recruitment board exam for uh, ERB exam for uh, lecturer in polytechnic colleges and uh, assistant professors in engineering college. Uh, this ERB will conduct a separate type of exam. Uh, that exam will be in only one stage. Uh, at uh, polytechnic college exam, uh, polytechnic college lecturer's exam will be of uh, uh, 200 marks uh, for two hours. And the assistant uh, professor's exam will be uh, for three hours. Uh, this assistant professor exam, uh, you can take part in the assistant professor exam only if you complete your PG. After you are a postgraduate, then only you can apply for this exam. Uh, you will also have benefit, uh, beneficial marks uh, if you complete your PG and apply for the lecturers in Polytechnic College. Once you have your MD, you will have additional uh, three marks uh, if you apply for uh, Polytechnic Colleges. Next is higher studies option. You can do your, if you want to do your higher studies uh, uh, in India, you can write uh, uh, eight exam. Uh, 
that is through in india if you want to pursue any uh, ms or me you can uh, write this gate exam and you will have uh, you can have that valid gate score and apply for for any iits nits or top engineering college you will have a monthly stipend of rupees uh, 12500 clear gate you will be uh, you will be placed as a research uh, uh, sorry uh, research scholar uh, uh, like under any uh, professor as a help uh, for uh, their research help you will be placed and you can also do your pg for that you will have a monthly stipend of rupees 12500 next is transcript uh, transcript is for uh, pg in uh, colleges and anna university uh, many anna university uh, uh, colleges will also have gate uh, seats also if you clear gate you can join uh, within uh, tamil nadu also next is integrated phd course after ug completion in iits and in some top university uh, university like vit and amrita they give uh, integrated phd course after uh, you complete your uh, ug you can uh, uh, you can directly uh, do a phd that will be of 5 years uh, for that period they will also give you a stipend if you uh, uh, apply for it there is also some uh, scholarship exams uh, or special uh, uh, phd course exam uh, uh, for many iits uh, sorry top iits like iit bombay and iic bangalore bangalore like that uh, they will uh, they are giving a very high amount of uh, stipend uh, more than 50000 so that you can complete your phd and automatically uh, you can uh, have your stipend also very large amount of stipend uh, you can uh, search the uh, uh, nserb website national science and research board of india that website if you search you can see uh, that the integrated phd course information or a special announcement given by the government of india and next uh, uh, other um, uh, civil engineering top institutes are in uh, in pune it is a construction management institute uh, and uh, many many people used to say that is a 100 plus 100% placement institute they will somehow place you in uh, any of the uh, construction management company but the only disadvantage is they will have a very high fee structure uh, that is it will have some uh, fee structure for two years uh, around 10 lakhs like that uh, that is the only disadvantage but uh, you will have 100% placement in it uh, we also have many mba courses introduced by many top university like uh, amity university they have uh, introduced mba courses in construction project management the mba in construction economics and quantity survey mba in uh, real estate and urban development Uh, like these are the new type of mba courses uh, construction related mba courses that have been implemented now in mba they have uh, implemented many construction related mba courses in kaiser university like the universities uh, uh, top uh, universities they have introduced this new type of integrated courses you can search for that also uh, that construction management uh, 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 department is having a large amount of job opportunities is uh, in india nowadays for that uh, you must uh, be well versed in uh, prime hour or software uh, ms project uh, previously we, we used to use ms project uh, but nowadays we are using prime hour prime hour is the software uh, if you know that uh, software properly you can uh, get into any type of uh, in any uh, construction project uh, management company once you know the basic construction procedures and you are well versed in uh, prime hour then you can apply to any construction project management the company next if you want to do your uh, higher studies in uh, abroad uh, ielts if you all you know uh, in our college uh, many people will write this type of exams ielts gre and the doctoral exams for pursuing masters in uh, foreign industries uh, many uh, foreign universities and uh, many uh, certain type of countries uh, specific only certain type of exams uh, based on that you can get into those in the we are having vast opportunities in civil engineering either industry oriented or other um, academic oriented we have many large opportunities and once you complete your pg you can also join as uh, assistant professor in colleges and you can uh, do research work also
next uh, after this uh, coronavirus disease uh, of 2019 what will be the scenario of the construction field uh, you you uh, all will know that uh, migration of laborers and people to the remote places that will surely affect the construction industry and that will uh, affect the labor rate change uh, uh, of the laborers uh, because our local laborers will always uh, ask for more money and they uh, they will do only less amount of work uh, but uh, all those other state laborers have gone to their places that will surely affect our construction industry next is the foreign direct investment in our state and country uh, daily we will see in newspapers that our uh, chief minister is uh, inviting many uh, foreign industries to come and do business with uh, tamil nadu uh, so that it will benefit uh, it will be beneficial to us that will surely affect our construction industry and we will have many changes after this coronavirus disease relating to construction next the safety measures a new type of safety measures uh, we are seeing new type of safety measures after this corona uh, coronavirus disease uh, uh, we are using the face mask uh, everything will be uh, uh, replicated in construction industry also we will also see many safety measures implications in construction industries and the real estate sector will uh, will, be, uh, uh, will will be affected uh, more due to this uh, improper sales nowadays because of uh, this uh, virus disease we have been uh, uh, not able to work uh, in our uh, practical life for some two, or two, two months so there is no proper flow of money uh, liquid cash no proper flow of money so that uh, the people are unable to buy any properties that will surely affect our construction business due to this foreign direct investment we will have many job opportunities after this uh, after the completion of this virus disease it will help us we are also having many opportunities in the engineering field it is one of the uh, important dominating field in our country in terms of employment so we, we don't need to worry for uh, any uh, just uh, want to find our talent and interest and we must uh, shape our academy in that way if you have any questions you can ask yes the part thank you vignesh uh, the participants may ask the question uh, in the chat box preferably we have a short question and answer section please post your questions in the chat box in 5 minutes we will have the quiz also in this application itself so you can please ask your questions before that Okay, then we'll have the quiz uh, shortly now. or well, please ask it to the question
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now I request uh, Mr. G. Arun, Assistant Professor of Department of Civil Engineering, to give the vote of thanks. My thanks is for an elaborate and wonderful presentation on how a building can be constructed as a personal building. And also highlighting on the career options. I'm sure you will be inspiration for the students. Thank you again. Thank you again. And I thank the department of R. Kumuda for granting us permission and for the constant support and encouragement to do the alumni uh, webinar series. I also thank the participants for attending. I am looking forward for your enthusiastic participation in the upcoming session. And finally, I thank Cisco for providing us a wonderful meeting platform the day. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. The feedback form has been, uh, the link has been given in the chat box. Uh, please complete the feedback form uh, soon. Uh, thank you so much, participants. Thank you, Vignesh. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.